All right, now moving forward, let's see if I can get the uh, other olive. It's like a ton of reflected light happening in here. Light's coming from the left, therefore it has to go from light to dark this way. Always thinking about the movement. I liken it to like scales. You know, everything about a scale is going up or down the scales, if you've played any instrument. And I'm either going uh, lighter or darker. So sometimes what you can do is mix a string before, from light to dark. And there's a lot of music an analogies in uh, painting that I think even Newton was relating uh, when he first um, discovered that a prism would uh, act like a chromatic aberration and separate light waves. And uh, I forget the way that he did it. I think there were seven, seven notes um, and also seven, he also related it to planets, I believe, at the time. But um, there's just so much beautiful musical analogy in everything that we're doing, from uh, names of things and scales to harmony is also a term that you'll hear that is also pulled from or analogous with music. This has to feel like it's getting a lot of reflected light. So after I kind of paint the base, I'll go back in and lighten it to make sure it feels like that reflected light is just more of like a whisper. If I paint it at first, my eyes may kind of adjust almost like an aperture and see it as a light surrounded by darks. But if I paint it in first and then start to feather in a little bit of the reflected light, it becomes more of a, a whisper, which is really the way in which, you know, it should be painted. There we go. And now just get a little bit of the crevice shadow underneath. if I a little sloppy there. All right. That's a cast shadow. to that form, uh, onto the cloth. Let's see if I can do the green one now.
Just see if I can get that cast shadow in now on the cloth. It's raw umber. Dark moment right in there. Soften that. And then see if I can just roll towards the roll out of that crevice shadow. Go, it feels good. careful of edges. So now what I'm going to do is grab a little bit more of the Gamsol and the Stand Oil. I'm going to take a look at the color of the cheese. I made a decision yesterday based off of the cheese having gone through a drawing and then um, perhaps adding some time to change color. And now what I'm going to do is just really take and add a little bit of oil back to the cheese color. Uh, it's still wet. And I think I'm going to adjust it actually. I think it just got a little bit uh, deeper than I wanted to. Uh, I was kind of going with it, uh, with the, the painting, which is totally fine, kind of putting notes down and then saying, does that feel correct? And then having something to adjust off of. But now what I'm gonna do is just actually take and make this a bit lighter in value. I think Gouda cheese is perhaps not that dark. I think it got just a tiny bit too dark. yellow ochre. What I'm going to do is kind of tiptoe into uh, making it a little bit lighter, not making a huge drastic choice. But again, once you get paint down, I can always kind of reassess and say, does that feel correct? Uh, does it feel perhaps now too light? And then kind of write it into the correct spot. The most important thing is to try to be honest and not paint what you think it should be but what it is uh, but then putting it kind of through does it fit the painting. Hopefully that makes sense. But. Gauge it off of the white now. Feels more, you know, that feels like it was really aged. But I went back and I studied, went and bought some more cheese and studied it fresh when it's cut. I feel like the whole idea behind this is that perhaps somebody was in the scene and then they walked away and then I was able to kind of sneak in and, you know, get a snapshot of them. So with that in mind, perhaps it should feel a bit more fresh. Also, contrast-wise, it brings the eye to the lighter part of the painting. So we now kind of come here. Instead of, uh, I think it also balances the painting, having it lighter, because now that deepness felt a little bit like it was too orange. Now it feels just a little better. All right, so now I'm gonna go do this one too. So in terms of harmony and color, I'm also thinking about composition uh, and movement of color. So 
as much as I like to triangulate with um, with kind of finding values off of each other, there's also a way to kind of think of uh, harmony and color of, you know, this is going to unite with this, and I've got a repetition of colors going through here, so there's movement, and the eye actually tends to pick up on uh, where that same color is throughout the painting, which creates movement. And uh, these are now connected. Uh, they were connected before too, but perhaps if I get lighter in value, it may actually start to group with a lighter value like uh, the white here. So I wonder if the eye could then move through here, depending on how light I get with this to then move through this space over. So movement and composition is always something I love to do. And also unity. So we have unity between these three, you know, grouping up here, a pattern, and then we have almost kind of like isolation where there's a group that's off of it. There's pattern here between these two. And then we have these kind of rounded objects uh, juxtaposed to this sharp object. So always thinking of uh, contrast. Contrast is always interesting. Let's see if I can just... Clean up that edge a little bit. Sometimes what's nice about having a second session with a painting too is just the idea that you can kind of grab a little bit of paint and dry brush over the top. What that does is just add like a scratchiness to the paint. But I liken it to kind of surface, uh, surface quality where we have this idea, you know, happens a lot on like surfaces like bowls, but perhaps there's like the object and then there's the imperfection of what happens up over the surface of just, um, you know, outside things, like perhaps got scratched or things like that. On a bowl, it's usually like the tarnish of, uh, you know, that's what I'll paint last. Kind of what's sitting up on the surface that uh, in here, there's not much surface going on in this though, uh, change. All right. Feels good. Let's see if I can just get a little bit of Gamsol, a tiny bit, a little more fat oil, stand oil here, and then reactivate just this red. Got to be careful. This truly were just like cad red. Cad red takes a while to dry. Uh, adding nut at the natural iron oxides to a pigment. You can see now that I put it out. I actually pulled some paint off. Uh, but adding iron oxides to like a red will actually help speed it up a little bit too. So, so sometimes I'll actually sneak that in there and uh, in red, cadmium red, which takes a while to dry, it'll help to just speed a, speed a color up a little bit. Also depends on your deadline, but hopefully you're painting without deadlines. Deadlines, um, I'm not a fan of deadlines. I think even Bouguereau or El Matadema, uh, was they basically said that a painting is done when it's done, not when the timer goes off, And in a sense. Um, take your time with your artwork and don't, you know, perhaps you're rushing for a show or if it's a commission, you have to hit a deadline, but if you can uh, let it come to fruition and uh, be what it is when you're ready, to be done with it. There's like a little bit of kind of wax. Let's 